Yo, I guess Cardi's back at it again, and he recently just signed a brand new artist, apparently. His name is L5, and he's gonna be signed to the OPM label, and you guys already know the OPM label is pretty much stacked, and just the way that Cardi's been, just been able to run his label with him not even being that big of an artist. I mean, if you look at Yo Gotti, I guess he's not necessarily like a big artist either, but he definitely just has that, the influence and put in the work for so long. Cause I think Yo Gotti is like around like, he's gotta be in his 40s, mid 40s or something like that. And Cardi is like around 28 and hasn't been in the game that long. But the one thing that makes Cardi just super relevant for his label is he, he has three classic albums, like three pretty much 10 out of 10 projects. And I'm not talking about my personal opinion, I'm just kind of talking about just kind of, you know, just the audience's opinion. You know what I mean? Like self-titled, a classic, dialect, considered a classic, and a whole lot of red considered a classic as well. But yeah, let's just check out this, this post about it, because Opium Baby pretty much confirmed it. So TG Hellraiser. And then this is like part of Cardi's merge, Playable Card right here in Young Tack. This part definitely confuses me a little bit, you know what I mean? And I promise you, I do not have a virus on my laptop. I was just watching some some videos, you know, some, some X videos. No, I'm, I'm totally kidding. I, but I, I like to like stream some like different TV shows like Power and different shows like that. And I was using this website called Bflix and you'll see some pop-up ads and stuff like that. It's not because I'm watching some weird ass shit, you know? But anyways, Open Baby says does some disc emojis i'm not quite sure what that is like an alien emoji and it says l and then he does the high five emoji so he's talking about okay man <laughs> i was a little bit slow right there this is the opium label and he says l5 that that took me a little bit there but i'm still figuring it out you know what i mean and then um tg hellraiser post on a story appreciate that i play bacardi and I guess Hellraiser is L5. I'm, I'm not even I'm not even too sure on that. You know what I mean? And then Hellraiser's playing Sky by um, Playboy Cardi. So yeah, I think I think TG Hellraiser is definitely definitely L5. I could be wrong on that, but let me know. But anyways, I was checking out L5 yesterday just because everybody was just like talking about oh man, L5 is signed to Opium. You know what I mean? And his streams just went skyrocketing since the last time I saw. Like before, this was like at ninety thousand, whatever. Now it's at four hundred and seven thousand. These are his top songs: "What's Up, You Fool," "Switch Street," featuring La Draco, "43 Ave," and Eurus is at one hundred twenty thousand. So he's pretty much just blowing up just with this little cosign, even if it's fake. Because you guys remember the whole situation with Hard Rock. Some people thought Hard Rock was signed to um, Opium. Some people thought Glock, Glock 40 Spaz was um, signed to Opium and he just also blew up too. So like pretty much just any Opium co-sign, you're just going to skyrocket the numbers and stuff like that. And I was just checking out his, his music and it's very much Glock 40 Spaz kind of range, homicide gang kind of range music. It's very, very like Atlanta, new school street and... This is just why I don't understand why people just don't appreciate Homicide Gang the way they are. Like honestly, Homicide Gang is probably my favorite rap group. I probably listen to them the most right now. They're perfect for the gym. They're perfect for bumping in the whip. They're perfect for, you know, just getting just getting ready to go out and just hyping yourself up in the mirror. You know what I mean? Thinking you're the man and stuff like that. Like I'll be listening to Homicide Gang like so much. Like especially Fifth Amendment is probably one of my favorite projects this year. I've just had it on repeat. And then when Snutter Knock came out, I was just listening to that, that album just so many times, man. It's just like, it's just such a banger project. And it's one of my favorites this year. But like, Fifth Amendment, man, so, so good. But let's just, let's just take a look at just how good the cosign of Playboy Cardi is. Let's look at Homicide Game, where they're at right now. They're 1.6 million monthly listeners. And they haven't even had a full breakout single yet. Sure, they had Lifestyle, which was one of their their, their their first singles, whatever. They have Uzi Work. They have DX, DX, with Homicide Gang. It's a 1 million. But let's just look at the stats right here. 1.6 million monthly listeners and 500 at 21 million streams. Lifestyle is at 22 million streams. Uzi Work is from their second most recent project, um, Snow or Not. It's already at 9 million. And these guys are like, it's like pretty organic. Like, obviously, they have the... Uh, 
the opium cosan and stuff like that but they've never really had a big track that really propelled them to you know just just to like the top of the underground i mean obviously they are the top of the underground but they haven't really garnered that that cult like own fan base yet but they're still super fire you know what i mean and i think this is kind of the direction ricardi is going to go with this next project definitely more of like the the street music you know what i mean kind of like homicide get kind of like i guess l5 black 40 spies so i think more people need to appreciate homicide getting the way they are and then Ken Carson dropped um, a great chaos this year. He's the, the biggest artist under Playbook Cardi with 7.1 million monthly listeners. His top song right now is 34 million fighting my demons off of a great chaos, which only came out about like two months ago. And then obviously Yale, which was his first ever single under Opium, or first single in general, really, that like he got the push, got the push from academics. It's already a gold track. It's at 154 million. That track is so good. And Jennifer's Body is at 17 million. Paranoid's at 14 million. And Singapore is at 12 million. So, you know, Ken Carson just really took advantage of the, the opium cosign. And, you know, he's just straight up mainstream right now. And then you have Destroy Lonely. I, I also wanted to mention Ken Carson also sold, you know, 46K for this week. You know what I mean? Like, Definitely a huge W, you know. Like he's he's just heavy in my rotation. Like I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a video on like my my top artist, whatever. And Ken Carson's like I think he's like third. I think it's I think it's Yeet, Little Uzi Vert, Ken Carson, Destroy Lonely, and then Homicide Gang. So like I, I just love OPM's music. You know what I mean? Like all the artists in there. And I was checking out L5. It sounds like it'll be good gym music. It's just very all over the place, kind of like um, Glock 40 Spaz. Black 40 Spaz like has clicked a few times, but not really enough for me to be like, yo, like, I'm like a fan of them. I've, I've definitely had a few workouts to him. And then Destroy Lonely is at 3.3 million monthly listeners. He hasn't dropped in a while since If Looks Could Kill. And If Looks Could Kill dropped back in, when did it drop again? May 5th. I do kind of think like the album would have hit a lot more if he would have dropped it right now, but it's still sold 29K first week. And a lot of people have mixed opinions on if looks could kill, including myself, which I kind of think the, the project was just too long. If you would have just split it in half, have 14 to 13 songs of the best tracks that I like or the tracks that he thought he should have used, I think this would have been an album of the year contender. And if looks could kill is still my top 10 favorite, just because of how strong some of those songs are. You know what I mean? And he also dropped a deluxe pretty recently and... They're all gonna go on tour together, so just showing that um, L5 recently signed to Opium, it makes me think like, oh, I think this whole tour is not gonna be happening anytime soon because I do not think that, um, I do not think Cardi's dropping anytime soon. And like I said in other videos, I think like, I think Playboy Cardi is kind of going in the direction of Frank Ocean, where he's gonna, where fans are always gonna be speculating, is he gonna be dropping? Is he gonna be dropping? But never ends up dropping. But Cardi's already put in the work as three classics, similar to Frank Ocean. Frank Ocean has about three classic projects, and he's just chilling. Like he's already put the groundwork in, and he's solidified. But yeah, this is super interesting. L5, the official new signee of Opium. According to Opium Baby, I guess we'll figure out if it's actually true or not, or Opium Baby was just kind of giving him a cosign, you know what I mean? But let me know what you guys think, though.